you know what you should do. You should follow me on Twitter at Brummer018. Link in the description. Do it now. Hello everyone, welcome along to another video. Brahma18 here, thank you for joining me today in what is another edition of our FIFA 20 Custom Tactics series. The series where we take real life systems and tactics uh, and I'll show you how to replicate them in game. And not only replicate them, also how to adapt them so that they will actually work. And you can play with them too and uh, use them to great success. So we've gone through a lot so far on one that has uh, had quite a few suggestions and I've been really looking forward to doing is this one. The 532 slash 352 of Chris Wilder at Sheffield United. This will be the first sort of five back system kind of with, uh, you know, sort of wing back players that we are going to have on the uh, on the channel. So I'm looking forward to getting into this one today. Um, you know, very much based on possession, very underrated tactic actually. Um, and the reason being is that you'll find it's very versatile. You can play on the front foot, as we see them do so much. Um, they're very comfortable on the ball, everyone in this system. But at the same time, when they need to bed in, they need to be robust, they need to be solid, they can do that as well. And that's how they can then gel into a, a five back. So there's a lot to, um, to sort of unpack into this. Uh, first off with the formations. Now what you'll find is that we're going to actually alter some of these positions. Um, and I'll sort of explain why we do that on the way. So first of all, um, rather than it being a 5-3-2, what you actually want to do is you want to go into the formations tab and you want to change this to a 3-5-2. Now the reason being is that then the wing backs then become right and left midfielders. Now you might think, well why would we do that? Would that not leave us more vacant going backwards? Well, uh, there should be a clip on screen now or a picture, something along those lines of this actually working in game. That's me playing with the 3-5-2 and you'll find that actually they do still play like fullbacks when out of possession. They'll still bed in because they realise, thankfully, the AI is programmed to realise that there isn't full backs behind them. So they then need to cover those defensive responsibilities. Um, and this is a system I've used loads in, um, in career mode so far this season. Um, and, you know, it works a treat. So you actually want to change these um, because what you'll find in real life is the likes of Stevens and Baldock are very, get into very advanced areas. They're not like regular full backs who, um, of course, um, whilst getting forward... They're not quite, you know, that driving force on the wing. Now, with these two, um, you know, constantly you'll see them get into the byline, but also in very high positions to receive the ball. When a deep line playmaker such as Norwood, for example, uh, gets on the ball, these guys are well ahead um, of him. So, changes to the 3 5 2. And then what we're going to do is what we're going to do first of all is switch these around. Um, and you'll see why shortly. So you've got these three in midfield, but we're actually going to change these a little bit. Now, what you'll find is Ollie Norwood is the more deep line playmaker role, and he'll, he'll generally stay a bit deeper, whereas the likes of Fleck and Lundstrom are seen generally getting into the box more. Now, unfortunately, you can't have a holding midfielder here because EA don't realise that you can have one single central holding midfielder. So what you want to do is you keep him there, and then what will happen is you'll move Fleck up to LCM. Um, and then Lundstrom, you can move along just a little bit if we can um, if we can find it here. And then have him as the cam. So what you'll find is then, you've got Norwood as the deep line playmaker, the holding midfielder. And then John Fleck, who, um, well, sometimes will get into the box, mainly just sort of parades around side it. And then you'll find Lundstrom getting into the box a lot more. And that's how, you know, um, some of his goals, well, all, pretty much all of his goals have been scored in the Premier League this season. By arriving into the box, I mean that true box to box like player. So he'll get into those more advanced areas where Fleck, whilst occasionally getting into the box, will generally um, you know, be able to maintain order and recycle the ball um, just outside the box. So that's what you're looking for here. Um, and that's that's pretty much it for the you know adapting positions and changing positions. Then we can move on to the player instructions before moving into the tactics. So, first of all, with Henderson. What we've done for a lot of these tactics videos, and it's something we're going to do today, is we're going to put him on counter crosses. And the reason being is that it's quite hard to defend, particularly corners um, on FIFA. So what you do is, if you have your goalkeeper coming for crosses, it just relieves that pressure a little bit. You know, it relieves that pressure a little bit off you, and the keeper will take the front foot a little bit more. Um, you know, to help you in those situations. And in terms of saving outside the box, um, you know, keep this on balance for the sake of replicating the system. Whilst Henderson... 
he's more than comfortable coming outside his box. You know, you rarely find them in those positions where, you know, players are, well, opposition teams are playing the ball over the top because they just don't afford them that opportunity. So you want to keep him on balanced. And then we move on to the centre-backs. And this is something that a lot of people have been, you know, sort of talking about. What you've got is, is you've got the two overlapping centre-backs. So O'Connell and Basham will actually get forward into the opposition box. They'll either underlap Bulldog, overlap Norwood, etc. Um, and then they offer that that other attacking piece of uh, threat. And the reason why they've done this um, and they've carried it through right the way is, is that generally it's... Um, when you're in a possession system and you're playing on the front foot and teams, the opposition are, you know, trying to be robust, hard to break down. What you do is, is you then send an extra centre-back forward and it creates another um, bit of unease for the opposition. They don't know who to mark. They don't know who to chase. There's an extra man there. Um, and therefore, it gives you that more attacking options. And it's a really well-working tactic. Now, the problem is with this is that I've used this plenty of times also when I've used this system in career mode and you'll find that the centre backs just don't get forward even though I've got them on join attack so what you have to do is, is you have to take control yourself you've got LB press LB and A so that once you've passed it off the centre back will then make a run forward and as he's running forward you'll find that people aren't going to pick him up because he's of course he's an extra man and then you've got another option going forward so you've actually got to take the initiative there um, and do it yourself. But what you want is you want O'Connell and you want Basham on join the attack, whereas Egan is the one covering and remaining, uh, you know, within his position. Moving on to the midfield now. First of all, we start off with Ollie Norwood. Of course, he's a deep line playmaker, um, so you of course want him to stay back while attacking. Renown um, for his. Uh, underrated passing ability if anything um you know this guy just spearheads attacks all boys long passing um in in plenty of uh, plenty of situations so first of all you want him to stay back while attacking uh, but you also want him to man mark now this is more of a fifa related thing yet again we're trying to adapt it so that it will actually work what you'll find is is that the opposition midfielders will generally storm into the box and people don't follow them. Midfield, Euro midfielders don't follow them. And that's because, um, you know, they're not man marking. So you want to change this to man mark. And hopefully it should fix that problem. In terms of defensive positioning, um, you actually want him to cover the centre as well. The reason being is that these centre-backs here, either the right centre-back or the left centre-back, will actually cover the wing if, say, Baldock or Stevens aren't there. And then he can bed into that sort of space that's left behind by that. So you want him to cover the centre. Moving on to John Fleck, now, like I say, he'll get forward a bit more. He'll get into more of those advanced areas um, generally. So what you want to do with him is, first of all, you want him to stay on the edge of the box of the cross. And this is something we spoke about um, you know, earlier on when we were adjusting the uh, positions. Whilst Lundstrom's more the box of box guy, Fleck occasionally gets into the box, but will generally stay on the edge of it to provide that support should a loose ball come out to that area. So you want him to stay on the edge of the box but you want him to get forward in terms of attacking support. That way you've still got that other option. Uh, and then in terms of defensive positioning, the same as Norwood, really. We want him to cover centre for the uh, for the same reasons. And then moving on to Lundstrom, he's very much that boxer box man. And he will pick up those pockets of space in between the midfield and the defence. As well as getting into the box, picking up on loose balls and making a, a nuisance of himself. So first of all, you want him to get into the box of the cross. But obviously as a boxer box man, you also want him to come back on defence as well. So that he will, um, you know, he'll fill his defensive roles, and that's very much it for Lundstrom in that sense. Um, so we can move on to the wingers now. So first of all, you want them both on comeback on defence. That's very self-explanatory. They are, you know, essentially wing backs slash wide midfielders, whatever you want to call them. So you want them on comeback on defence, and then moving on to chance creation, you actually want these to stay wide. So what you'll find is these are the guys who create the width, obviously, because they are the only guys on the side. Um, and as a result, despite the fact it's a possession-based system, um, you know it's quite spacious, it's quite wide, and that you know part of the reason is because of these two wingers. Or wing backs, whatever you want to call them. So you want these on stay wide, and it gives you that outlet going out wide. And then in terms of support runs, you actually want these to get in behind. And that's another reason why we're actually moving them up to uh, right and left infield. Is that you'll find plenty of times there'll be balls penetrating the defence, and these two will be the ones getting onto it. You know, around about in the corner areas. 
And so, uh, with them at right and left midfield, you you actually have that option now because now they will run in behind, and you've got that another route out wide to penetrate in behind the opposition defence. In terms of supports on crosses, you want these to get into the box for crosses as well. For any fantasy team uh, players out there, you'll find these guys score a lot of points, um, partly because. One, they score goals occasionally, and also because they get a lot of assists. And part of the reason is because um, they offer another option in the box as well. So when one of them's whipping the ball in, uh, say Stevens, for example, Baldock on the other side will be drifting into the into the box to um, you know to create another option. And they're both exactly the same in terms of their instructions. So that's very, very simple for you guys. Um, and then you can work off it on that. Now moving on to the two strikers. So we actually have two of these in different roles, depending on who it is. Now, we're going with McGoldrick and uh, Lise Mousset because at present of recording this, these are the two who are mainly playing. But of course, you've got the likes of Callum Robinson, McBurney, etc., Billy Sharp as well. Um, you know, and the roles vary uh, a little bit differently. But for the sake of these two, we're going to go through with this one. So first of all, with McGoldrick, now, of course, he's got less pace than Mousset, less energy. So you don't find him getting in behind as much. What you'll find with um, McGoldrick is that he'll play more of the uh, target man role. So he's also asking for the ball to feed, but also he's drifting um, you know, back a little bit to pick up on the balls, use his strength to um, you know, sort of hold it up and allow runners around him, such as Lundstrom, such as Stevens, Fleck, etc. Um, and of course, Moussa getting in behind as well. That's really where he's at his best. You know, if you're trying to get him to play in behind, it's just not going to work. Um, so you want him as a target man, but also you want him to drift wide as well. And what you find is, obviously, because they've only got one player on each side rather than actual wingers and fullbacks together, um, is that he'll um, drift into those areas that are perhaps vacated. Say if you're looking to play in the counter attack, Stevens is back defending. McGoldrick will then drift out wide and then still provide that outlet going forward so that you've got someone on the wing. So whilst he's still a target man, you can have him drifting out wide as well. Um, but whereas with Musse, it's a little bit different. First of all, you want him to get in behind. That's where he's, um, you know, at his best. He's utilising his pace. But then you also want him to drift wide as well. And that's for the same reason as McGoldrick. What you'll find is, is again, if um, you're defending and you go quick on the counter attack, he'll come into those wide areas and provide that outlet. Therefore, you have got someone wide. And then the likes of Lundstrom and Fleck will storm forward uh, and bash him as well because the centre backs will get forward. And create that, um, you know, sort of central outlet. So for them, you want them both to drift wide. They won't always be out wide all the time just because they're on drift wide. You find them in the central areas a lot and they're still, you know, performing their role. But it's just when the situation dictates to it, when you need to. So that's that for the instructions. Now we move on to the uh, tactics. And uh, what you want here is you want press after possession loss. Now the reason being is that it's a very, very tactic, this system is. So... Whilst you will find it's possession based and therefore they'll press a lot, particularly when the opposition are on the back foot with the ball, they're still happy to bed in as well, um, you know, and be solid, be tough to break down um, and be compact. So we press after possession loss, um, you'll find them instantly, of course, after they've lost possession or when there's, say, heavy touches, etc., misplaced passes of the opposition, they'll be pouncing on it. But then, um, you know, in certain moments in the game, when the opposition are seizing more control of the game, then they're happy to bed in um, and then they'll remain solid. So press after possession loss is pretty much ideal for this system. In terms of width, you want to move this down to three. Of course, a very narrow tactic with no wingers, only one player on each side. Um, you want to fill in those central areas and then they'll come out wide when they need to. It's less about stopping the cross and more about not being able, the opposition being able to play through you, which I believe is um, you know, a tactic which works very well, in particular for this system. But in terms of depth, you want to move this up to 8. Now, the reason being is that, like I mentioned earlier, you'll find that a lot of the time, opposition aren't able to, you know, go over the top or get in behind of the uh, Sheffield United defensive line, despite the fact uh, that centre-backs are going forward, etc. And that's why you don't want this at 10. You want this a little bit deeper at 8. And so, therefore, you can still take the front foot, but they're going to be a little bit deeper to be able to counter those sort of situations. 
Moving on to offensive now with the ball, of course, it is possession-based, but don't be afraid to go a little bit more direct because they do do that. There's a lot of cross-field switches. There's a lot of long passes, and I say long passes, not just hit and hopes because they are long passes. They're directed, they're calculated, uh, but you know they will travel 30, 40, 50 yards. So whilst it's possession, don't be afraid to uh, you know to fling the ball about a little bit more. And that's what comes with the width as well. What you've got here is the attacking width. Rather than it being narrow to supplement the sort of traditional you know possession-based system where players are close to each other, you actually want this wider at seven. And therefore, you'll find players in a lot more space. Um, and then it gives you the opportunity to go with more of those cross-field switches, those longer passes. Because again, whilst it is possession based and you will find players closer to each other, in a lot of moments you'll see that there are players um, you know, trying to look to, to play into the space a little bit more um, and to try and create that space. So we whip at seven just before you go into um, you know, the very wide options. It will, uh, it will give you that, that ability. Moving on to players in the box, we move this up to uh, seven. And the reason being is then you'll find roughly three or four in a box. So you've got the two strikers, and then you'll have Lundstrom, um, and then maybe one of the fullbacks coming in as well. So in terms of players in the box, you want this on seven. And then for corners and free kicks, what we've done in every single one of these videos, and we will do today as well, is uh, we move these up to four. The reason being is that then you'll have two players back, for the um, for corners, for example, um, and then the opposition are not going to leave more than one player very rarely ever um, up front. So then you've got more than enough to mark them out to try and stop the counter attack. But then you've got enough players in the box to um, to be a nuisance, to be an actual threat at set pieces. So four for both of these works out very well. So that rounds it off for this tactic. Um, thanks a lot for watching. If you've made it through to the end, I really do appreciate it. Don't forget to uh, get at me in the comment section. Let me know any questions you have about the uh, the system. If you need to know anything or whatever, I'll, you know, I'm more than happy to respond and try and respond to as many comments as I possibly can. Um, lots of suggestions coming in and a big list to do in terms of these tactics videos. So just trying to work my way through them, but keep them coming in. Um, and uh, you know, I really do appreciate that. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more regular gaming content and ring the bell. Uh, check out my AC Milan career mode series on FIFA 20, which is currently ongoing if you haven't already. Uh, and on that note, we are going to finish it off there. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Come on.